In 1881, four treasure hunters left a place called Grapevine Station, now known as Barstow, California. They went northeast towards a mountain that looked very colorful, like calico fabric. They named the mountain, the area around it, and the town they started Calico because of its colors. They found silver in the mountain, and this discovery led to the creation of the Silver King Mine. This mine became the top silver producing mine in California in the mid 1880s. John King, who helped these treasure hunters, and after whom the mine was named, was also related to Walter Knott, who started Knott's Berry Farm. John King was in charge of keeping the peace in San Bernardino County from 1879 to 1882. By early 1882, the town of Calico had grown enough to get its own post office and start publishing a weekly newspaper called the Calico Print. The town quickly grew to have many places like three hotels, five general stores, a place to buy meat, bars, brothels, and lots of restaurants, and places to stay. The local government set up a school area and a place for voting, which helped the community grow stronger. Calico wasn't just a place for miners. It also had police with a deputy sheriff and two constables, legal help with two lawyers and judge, people to run the town with five commissioners and two doctors for health care. The town also had a Wells Fargo office and services to send messages or talk over long distances. Between 1883 and 1885, Calico was a busy place with over 500 mines and 1,200 people living there. People who broke the law or the town's rules were buried in the Boot Hill Cemetery, which was a reminder of the tougher side of life in a lively town. A few years after Calico started, people found a mineral called Colmanite in the nearby mountains, which made the town much richer. By 1890, about 3,500 people lived in Calico, including people from China, England, Ireland, Greece, France, the Netherlands, and America. But in that same year, a new law called the Silver Purchase Act made the price of silver drop a lot. By 1896, silver was so cheap that mining it in Calico didn't make money anymore. The town's post office shut down in 1898, and the school closed too. As the 1900s began, Calico was almost empty, and by 1907, after borax mining also ended, everyone left for good. Some of the buildings from Calico were moved to Barstow, Daggett, and Yermo. This was the end for Calico, which used to be a busy mining town. In 1915, people tried to make Calico lively again by building a plant that used cyanide to get silver from unprocessed parts of the Silver King mine. During that time, Walter Knott and his wife Cordelia who would later start Knott's Berry Farm, moved to Newberry Springs. Walter helped by building the plant's tanks out of redwood for the cyanide process. Zenda Mining Company was the last company to mine in Calico. Inspired by a fake ghost town, they made it Knott's Berry Farm in the 1940s. Walter Knott, his son Russell, and Paul von Kleben, the art director at Knott's Berry Farm, visited Calico. After their visit, they were excited about the idea of bringing a real ghost town back to life since they had already created a pretend one. In 1951, Walter Knott bought Calico from Zenda Mining Company and asked Paul von Kleben to help restore it using old photos for accuracy. Using these photos, Walter's memories, and information from people who have lived there a long time, von Kleben didn't just fix up old buildings. 
but also rebuilt ones that were gone. Knott spent a big amount, $700,000, to fix up Calico. He chose Freddie Calico Fred Noller, a committed worker, to look after the town and greet visitors. In a kind act in 1966, Walter Knott gave Calico to San Bernardino County, turning it into a county regional park. Calico has been fixed up to look like it did during the silver rush, when it was booming. Even though many of the old buildings were taken down and replaced with the kind of fancy fake fronts that people think of when they imagine an old western town. Most of the buildings you see now are wooden, simple, and look very old. Some of the original buildings are still around, like Lil's Saloon, the town office, Lucy Lane's old house, which is now the main museum and used to be the post office and courthouse, Smitty's gallery, the general store, and Joe's saloon. They've also built a copy of the schoolhouse where the old one used to be. The places where the town's Chinese community used to live are now just ruins, with only a little bit of one stone wall left standing on a hill nearby. In November 1962, Calico Ghost Town became an official historic landmark in California. In 2002, it competed with another ghost town, Bodie, to become the state's official ghost town. By 2005, both towns were recognized for their historical significance during different mining rushes, Body for the Gold Rush and Calico for the Silver Rush. Now, Calico Ghost Town is a park where visitors can go on mine tours, watch gunfight shows, pan for gold, eat at restaurants, ride the Calico and Odessa Railroad, explore a mystery shack, and shop for souvenirs. It's open every day except Christmas, but you have to pay to get in, and some activities cost extra. You can also camp there overnight. The park hosts special events like historical reenactments, festivals, and Halloween celebrations. The Calico Cemetery, with 96 to 130 graves, includes people buried there in the 1900s. With its backdrop of rugged desert landscape, it holds stories of those who once called this place home. Among the buried are individuals whose lives encapsulate the harsh realities and fleeting dreams of the mining era. Notable figures include Tumbleweed Harris, the town marshal, Samuel Lyons King, a prospector instrumental in founding the Silver King Mine, and Margaret Kincaid Olivier, a schoolteacher who imparted knowledge in 1898 and 1899. The cemetery is also a place of unresolved mysteries, from the unsolved murder of Anastasio Rubio, who was robbed and killed after flaunting his earnings, to legends of fabricated grave markers that captivate the imagination, such as the tales of Daisy Dooley and Blackie Scroggins, markers without true counterparts in Calico's history. The spectral inhabitants of Calico are said to include Lucy Lane, who, with her husband, ran the town's general store before passing away in the town where she spent much of her life. Sightings of Lucy, distinguishable by her black lace dress, are a common occurrence, as she is believed to roam between her former home and the general store. The old schoolhouse is another hotspot for paranormal activity, with reports of ghostly teachers and students including a young girl who appears to children and teens before vanishing. Tumbleweed Harris, the last marshal of Calico, is also a prominent spectral figure often seen on Main Street, a reminder of his unwavering dedication to maintaining peace. The ghost town was used in many film and music productions. 
Calico was used in a 1965 TV show episode called The Book from Death Valley Days. The Ballad of Calico, an album by Kenny Rogers in the first edition, released in 1972, is all about stories from Calico, California. It was created by Michael Murphy and Larry Kanzler and did okay on the music charts. In the movie Tremors 3, Back to Perfection, Calico stood in for Carson City, Nevada. A horror book from 2004 called Thunder Road by Tamara Thorne was inspired by Calico. The town is also mentioned in a 2004 song by Joanna Newsom and is the setting for a 2005 romance novel by Jennifer Lynn called New Prince in Old Calico. In 2015, author Lauren Morgan Richards wrote about seeing a ghost known as the White Lady in Calico. The band Gorillaz filmed a music video there, and the K-pop group K.A.R. also shot a video in Calico for their song Hola Hola. Calico Ghost Town is a unique blend of the tangible past and the mysteries that continue to fuel the imagination. Whether drawn by the allure of historical exploration or the thrill of encountering the unknown, visitors to Calico find themselves stepping into a world where the echoes of the past are as vivid as the desert landscape that cradles this ghost town. <laughs>